just open it up for questions. As a, as a coach, is there any advice you can give Mike? All the hard work that's put in now is going to be out a little bit. Just yeah, you know, obviously it's unfortunate uh, any time that uh, one of your guys gets hurt. That's, that's part of the game. Um, you know, I hate it for Mike. He's worked extremely hard and uh, had prepared himself to, to have a big year. Um, but, you know, our guys know, we talk about it all the time, you know, that injuries happen. And really, to be honest, uh, the biggest thing to take away is, is how blessed he is that it wasn't a more significant injury than it really was. And uh, once we got the information uh, back and, and uh, found out exactly where the uh, fracture was, you know, we were really just – uh, very happy for him and for his future that he's going to be fine. And, um, you know, that I know he wants to play this year. I know he wants, you know, to, to be able to go out because right here in the middle of the season, uh, but that's really not the most important. Uh, most important is that he gets healthy and uh, is off the field, is able to, to be able to live a, a long life and have a chance to, to play football again. And, uh, and we have every assurance that he'll be able to do that. But, you know, you, you can't play the game scared. Um, you know, that's what you talk to the wideouts and skill guys all the time. You got bigger, faster, stronger athletes going out there. And in order to do what they do, you got to be able to play fearless. And, uh, you know, and, and he did. Uh, he had a heck of a heck of a drive and ended with a touchdown. And uh, so I, I have no doubt he'll be back. He was the first one. We had 630 meetings this morning and Mike was the first one uh, to show up. And I thought that that meant a lot uh, that he was there and, and uh, he'll He'll be able to help uh, coach and, and help with that group uh, here as we go over the next few weeks while he's recovering. How difficult is it when, when you see him down on the field? You know, I think you've got all this yeah. responsibility for him, but you've got a job to do and reel the other guys back. Uh, yeah, my, my first question is uh, I went through the checklist uh, was is it his knees okay? Did he break a leg? Is his ankles okay? And really, uh, Mike's kind of been a dramatic guy. He's he's uh, got banged up before in practice. He ran into a ball machine one time over there in the indoor. He's always kind of been a dramatic guy when he gets hurt on the ground. He's down a little longer than the normal player. So really, to be honest, I thought he was going to be okay once I heard it didn't have anything to do with knees or shoulders or uh, ankles. And uh, but then you know once we kind of found out it was a little bit more serious. You know uh, you hate that and. You could see, you know, the other guys on the field, Deshaun, and uh, you know those wideouts. You know, that's one of their guys. And uh, but, you know, we, the best part that came out of it is just to know that uh, it could have been a lot more serious than it was. And um, you know, he's blessed uh, to be able to come out of a uh, hit like that uh, where he is with a small fracture and something that'll be 100% uh, healed here with time. Yeah, you know, I think kind of what Coach Sweeney said yesterday is probably the best way to phrase it. You know, they're going to reevaluate it in six weeks. You know, if if it was one of us that's not playing football, I think after six weeks you can probably take the brace off and be okay. But uh, coming back to play a a sport where you know you got a helmet on and there's a lot of hitting going on, that that's probably a little bit different than the average person. So, you know, for us, we're 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 um, you know, we're, we're going to give him plenty of time. We've got great doctors uh, that will be looking at him and, and be able to give us updates. We'll, we'll get another update later on this week and, you know, each week how, how the healing's taking place. Uh, and then, you know, the other guys in the room, you know, just got to get together and, and go to work and be able to, uh, you know, pick up for anything uh, that we'll miss with Mike being off the field. Yeah, you know, I think um, the, the best way for us to go about it is, is to plan on him not being there. And then if something does happen and he, he's able to heal and, and everybody clears him, you know, great. But, you know, that's so far away. <laughs> really, we're, we're looking at this week. We can't even really think about six or seven weeks from now. And, um, you know, as a coach, you got to prepare with the guys that are there. And uh, we've, we've got plenty of guys. and. To be honest, and I told my wideouts this morning, I haven't lost any sleep at all worried about, oh, Mike Williams is going to be out. We're not going to have him for all these games coming up. I haven't lost any sleep at all. All my thoughts just been on him and uh, being disappointed for him uh, that he's not going to be able to be out there. But uh, we're going to be perfectly fine. I, I told my guys this morning, there's not anybody in the country that's going to feel sorry for the Clemson wide receivers. You know, we've got plenty of guys. There's no excuses. 
And, uh, you know, that's, that's why you recruit a lot of guys, because injuries happen. It'd be no different if he was to go out and, and tear an ACL or something, he'd be out for a year. And um, so, you know, our, our guys are, are ready for it. And we've prepared in fall camp. You know, Mike's a guy that we knew was going to get a lot of balls. And when you get a lot of balls, you put yourself uh, in more of a risk situation. So, you know, we've been preparing, uh, knowing that, you know, those guys have a tendency to get injured um, as, the, as the year goes on. You're not going to be able to stay healthy all year long. So we've cross-trained some guys. You know, Sharon Peak has played a lot of ball at, at the nine-man position, even though he's our start, has been our starting five-man. He's played a lot of ball this fall camp and this spring at the nine-man spot. So uh, I don't think there'll be a, a huge transition for him. Jeff, who becomes your best guess? Who becomes the downfield target now that Michael? Well, I think um, you know Sharon uh, will be that guy. R really, it's more about um, you know our, our scheme and kind of where our shots line up within our scheme, and then also who you're playing each week, it kind of changes. You know, last week we were playing a team that really liked to play off, so you had a lot of the, the quick game. And then as soon as you get guys that come up, and these guys this week will be a little bit more aggressive and, and get up in your face and play a little bit more man coverage. But uh, Sharon's a guy, you know, since he's been back from his injury and, and getting back full speed, uh, he's had a really good fall camp. Uh, he had a 72-yard touchdown and a big scrimmage for us. and. He's caught plenty of balls, so I think he'll be one of those guys. And I think also uh, Artavis Scott, you know, he's really worked hard on developing his down the field uh, receiving skills. And, you know, we're not able to see it uh, this past uh, weekend because of the scheme that Wofford was running. But, you know, I think he'll be able to, to bring something on there as well. And, you know, I think also uh, a few of those younger guys, you know, really the, 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 the message to my guys this morning is you know we're, we're not going to make up for Mike Williams production in one player you know that the next guy that comes on now that Mike's to the side whether that be you know Hopper Trevion Thompson Hunter Renfro Deion Kane you know or Ray Ray McLeod they're not going to make up for 1200 yards and 12 touchdowns uh, but as a group we can make up for that you know it's that's a you know it's an extra 100 yards per receiver in that room so it's an extra 10 yard catch per game and so that's really the message to all the guys in the room is, hey, we don't have to have one guy come in and, and try to replace Mike. But as a group, and as many guys as we're rolling and as many playmakers that we have in the room, and then also you got a guy like Jordan Leggett, who now has really come on. And I think Jordan's going to be uh, a bigger factor for us uh, down the field as well. So um, I, you know, our, our concern really has really been all about Mike. And uh, I think we. We feel very confident uh, with those guys in that room and uh, with the quarterback we have that we'll be able to take many, plenty of shots down the field. Well, I think, um, you know, there's a lot on tape to correct. You know, uh, sometimes you can go out and, and uh, you know, you play well, score a bunch of points, you move the football, and everybody goes home and feels really good about it. But as coaches, when we start grading the tape, you know, there's a lot of stuff to improve. And uh, But it's, a, it's a, uh, nice to be able to make those improvements and make those uh, – those changes after a win and not have to wait to a big loss to, to be able to get serious about some of these things uh, that they need to correct. And really it's uh, technique, uh, fundamentals. It's it, you know getting out there the very first time and playing, sometimes you get excited, you get juiced up and you forget about some of the details. So you know I, I think there's a lot to correct number one. Now seeing uh, you know, seeing that progress, we're, we're playing a, a really good team in App State. Uh, I think their defense, last seven games, uh, last six of 2014, and then first game in, in uh, 15, they're averaging giving up 255 yards total defense, which is pretty strong. So we're going to have a confident uh, defense that's coming in here. Uh, they'll create some more challenges for us than maybe we had last week. And uh, but you know that's how our schedule is going to be. It's going to continue to get harder each week. Um, so you know I think really that Coach Sweeney's message has been uh, the same since day one for our players 
is it's all about us. And uh, yes, we, we did some did some good things, but we got a lot of things that we can correct and a lot of things that we need to improve on if we're going to have a chance a few against a few of these uh, other teams down the road. Coach, I asked Ray Ray uh, how he managed to look so polished uh, with his route running and blocking uh, wide receiver already. He attributed that to being a really student of the game. Is that something that stood out to you about him, his acumen and his dedication to learn the game? Yeah, you know, I think uh, as freshmen, I've seen two different type of freshmen that come in. Uh, you have s the majority of them come in and they don't know what they don't know and they have to go out there in the game to kind of figure out, oh, that's why you've been telling me that for the last month and a half. Now I see. Now I'm going to go get it corrected. And then you have the other ones that come in that understand that it's going to take more than just talent to be able to execute at this level. And Ray Ray was one of those guys, you know, that, that came in and uh, wanted to be a student of the game and uh, takes good notes. He sits next to Artavis in the meeting room. Them guys are going back and forth over all the small details, you know, much like uh, some of our other older guys did with Artavis whenever he was coming in. Um, but, yeah, I've been very pleased uh, with Ray Ray. And, I mean, it was it, it went exactly like I was hoping for him as a freshman in his first game. You know, there was no big eye moment or anything like that. I mean, he. He went out there, and, and you would have thought he's been playing for us for, for two or three years. As an office coordinator, did you guys give me the play sheet of you wanted to this weekend? Yeah, I think, you know, going into it being the first game and then schematically what they were doing, um, we felt like we could be pretty simple and uh, really work on our tempo, playing fast, coming right out of the gate. And we were able to do that. And then as the game went, obviously, there's certain things you would like to hold uh, for other games coming up, and we were able to to do that, but we had them in case we needed them. You know, you don't have to go very far back to 2011, you know, to know we were in a one-point game going into the fourth quarter. So we had to be sure that that we had enough to win the game if we needed to in the fourth quarter. But uh, because of the way the guys executed early on, we were able to stay simple and play fast. How do you think about the running back core and the ability to get production out of almost every running back you put out there? Saturday? It's good. Uh, I was very pleased. It, it uh, really mirrored what we've seen in spring practice and fall camp. You know, we feel like, you know, we've got a room full of guys that can go out there and execute. Each one of the guys kind of brings something a little bit different. And uh, I think what you see, too, is you see some fresh legs. I mean, Zach Brooks comes out there right off the sidelines, and, man, he's fast, gets up there. And, you know, that defense has been out there the entire game. And uh, so if we can keep our guys fresh, and really the biggest thing you look for as a coach is you don't, you don't want to drop off when you put that next guy in. You don't want to have to affect how you're calling plays and what plays you're calling based off the pers personnel that's in the game, whether that be a running back, a tight end, or wide receiver. And uh, you know, we feel like we have the potential with this group of skill players at, at those three positions that we can roll those guys and, and, and call the game and, and not be worried about you know, only running certain plays with certain guys. Yeah, you know, you don't really have to come up with things. There are things. And, uh, you know, when, when you study it, I mean, obviously Coach Streeter, that's all he's coaching is the quarterbacks. And so, I mean, they got books this long about everything that they want to do. And, and he has, has some correction. But he, he did play uh, for being his first game back out there in a while. Uh, he played a very clean game. There was very few things that, uh, you know, that really needed to be corrected and, and a few things that maybe he can do to – to uh, clean up, but it was it was pretty smooth. Uh, but yeah, we you can a coach we, we can take as long as we need to to find corrections. I don't think we've had uh, anybody that's played a perfect game yet, but uh, it was very clean. I don't believe so. I believe Trevion came in first, and then uh, Dion played after that. But he did play in the uh, in the first half and. And then uh, once we had the injury, I think uh, Trevion went to the five-man position a little bit, which gave Dion a little bit more uh, opportunity in the boundary. Yeah, yeah, they did. And actually, it wasn't just the second group of linemen. It was the entire second offense and uh, that went in the game. So over the headsets, we call our – 
we, we don't have first team, second team, third team. We have orange, purple, and pride. And so over the headsets, he said, I want the purple group in there next, next series. And so we went to, to every position and put the second team in there. And, uh, you know, I think it did a couple things. Number one, it told those guys they need to be ready. It's not one of these deals you can just wait around to the second half. And number two, I think it showed the confidence that Coach Sweeney and our coaching staff have in that group um, because you're not going to put them out there in the third series of a game and uh, really try to slow down the tempo if you don't feel like they can go and execute. But uh, I know Coach Caldwell was very pleased uh, with his first group and second group that got out there. There's a lot of things to clean up. You had a lot of uh, guys were getting some first-time action. Uh, but overall, I felt like uh, they did a really good job going in there. So I think that was a, a, a huge benefit for them to get that experience early in the game. Yeah, I mean, that's, I, you know, it's one thing to talk about a receiver playing his first start. It's another thing to talk about an offensive lineman with everything going on. Uh, but, you know, I thought Mitch did really well. Uh, he, he's got plenty of things that he can uh, clean up from a technique and, and communication. But, uh, you know, Coach Caldwell's been doing this a long time. And, you know, he said he hadn't seen many uh, true freshmen go out in their first game and play the way he did. And, uh, you know, you look at them on the sidelines and in the huddle before you go out there. And, I mean, it, it wasn't too big of a stage for him at all. And uh, he's a guy that's only going to get better week after week. And, and really, each week, the, the competition kind of raises the bar. So, you know, he, he'll, he'll get a bigger uh, challenge this week than he had last week, that's for sure. Jeff, I'm guessing as a coach, you sometimes invoke the App State Michigan analogy <laughs> to, get, to get guys focused on things. Is that. Does that come up this week, even at all, since you're playing? You, you know, it, it really hasn't. Um, you know, our guys, they watch college football. They, they saw some upsets this past week. But really over the top of all of that, and it, you know, we did last week. We showed them the 2011 Walford, you know, a little bit. And now they think they got rid of that. Now we're going to remind them today that the defense coordinator that was calling the defense in 2011 is now at App State. So they still hadn't got away from it quite yet. Uh, but really, I think Coach Sweeney kind of takes it a level higher and when he really talks about it's not about who we're playing, it's about how we play. And so really, you know, we shouldn't have to co concern ourselves with who we're playing and, you know, whether it's going to be a letdown or whether we're going to be excited. We should play to that standard, you know, every game. And it sounds like coach talk, and, and that's fine, but, but it really, you know, it, it really is important. And that's what, you know, Coach Sweeney, he went on and on about the fans that were out here Saturday. And he said, you know what? The fans are catching on. It doesn't matter who we play. They're coming to watch the Tigers. And, you know, where maybe 10 years ago, <laughs> five years ago, it mattered who you were playing, how many people showed up. But really, we want to go out there every week and, and play to our standard. And, uh, you know, we feel like we've recruited well enough that if we do come out and play to our standard, you know, then we should have a chance to win every game. And if you don't, you're, you're in a conference and you got a schedule that you could get beat. It doesn't matter who's on your schedule. Um, and these guys are definitely uh, plenty talented to do that. I know their defense first year last year in the FBS, first year in the Sun Belt, and uh, they finished uh, number one in total defense in the Sun Belt. I mean, you don't, you don't just do that if you don't have a good scheme and good players. And I believe they also finished number 25 in all of FBS in total defense. And uh, so when we start showing them those things, they turn that video on, that, that'll get their attention. But, you know, I think one of the reasons we had the success that we had Saturday was because our guys weren't preparing for as if they were playing Walford. They were preparing for the first game of the year. And uh, it's a faceless, nameless opponent on the other side. And, you know, I think for the first couple of years, you know, Coach Sweeney would say that, but I really think our players believe that. And they've really taken a hold of that. And, you know, I could tell, I mean, in, uh, Friday, Saturday, the walkthroughs, the pregame, I mean, it felt just the same to me as far as their focus as if we were getting ready to play Florida State. And that's what we went in the locker room before the game and said, hey, our guys are ready to play. And, uh, and they went out and did it. So.